Hello, I'm Robert, and welcome to Robert's Guitars and Gear. Sorry, I have been uh, off the air for a little while. I have carpal tunnel in both hands, and you see this one I had surgery two weeks ago. This one I have surgery this upcoming week. So haven't done as many videos as I'd like, but I'm coming back. So thanks for joining. Today, we are going to talk about the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar. Now, these are just incredibly, incredibly cool guitars. I'm going to go through what I like, go through the specs, play a little bit as much as I can with my hands, and, uh, and sum up. So, first of all, you probably know that the Jaguar has a really great history in Fender. These came out in 1962. Uh, really, really the craziest guitars, fundamentally, that you'll ever see. They have what we call a rhythm circuit up here. And if this switch is flipped up, you're playing what, what Leo Fender called a rhythm circuit. Now we'll talk more about what that circuit really does in a minute. Down here, we have three switches. We can turn the bridge on and off, which would be the middle. We can turn the neck on and off. And we have this thing called the strangle switch. And if the strangle switch is up, then uh, you get a sort of thinner tone out of these single coil pickups. And if it's down, it's a, it's a little more bass. It's a kind of a uh, low pass filter. Of course, we have two single coil pickups. We have a trim. I've taken the trim arm off. It's a pop-in trim arm. And uh, it, it essentially pulls up this, this lever here. We have 22 frets in a 24 inch scale. We have classic kind of tuners and we have a really nice kind of lacquered neck. Now, the classic vibes have famously, this is a glossy neck. It's, it's viewed as a kind of classic or vintage look. And to be honest, it feels great. Overall, you know, when we talk about any of the classic vibes, and for sure this one, what you're going to get is a very well-made, very nice guitar. And this is no exception. This is just beautiful. Uh, the frets are good. I would say they're not great, but they're quite okay. I have not been moved to file any frets. Body is poplar, and it's fabulous. Some people say, oh, it's poplar. Well, you know, PRS chose Poplar for the John Mayer Silver Sky SEs, so it's not a bad tone one at all. Uh, the, the single coils, interestingly, have um, uh, a shield on either side. If you can see that shielding, um, being single coils, they will be uh, a little bit more noisy, especially with higher gain. So having described all of that, I'm just gonna tell you, I love this guitar. Now, if you watch my channel, you know that I have reviewed and I own many much more expensive and in some sense nicer guitars. And I don't like them as much. So let's talk about why and what's different. First of all, in a, in a classic vibe, the money's going into the basic guitar, let's say bones, okay? So where you're gonna get compromises are in, let's say, the tuners, uh, the switches and wiring, the trim system, you're gonna get the compromises there. Now, and some of those things affect function. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But a lot of those things affect, you know, really durability, for example. I mean, it's gonna be small pots, okay, in here. Uh, they function fine. But, you know, if you were gonna be gigging and regularly have a use with this, it's it probably wear out. And that's true with any classic vibe, but they function fine. But the nice thing is with the, with the bones of the guitar being so good, you can select what's important to you. You can do nothing and have a really fun guitar, or you can start to selectively modify it. And so I'll come back to what I did in just a second. The other thing I'll just highlight in this crazy design with all this stuff going on is there's a lot of moving parts, okay, uh, between the, the bridge with these uh, Mustang style saddles, uh, this trim, 
uh, all these switches. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that can rattle. Uh, and, uh, and for me, for many people, all of that adds up to really giving you a kind of vintage sound, kind of a, let's say, jangly 60s sound. And that's cool. You know, if you're doing a surf band, you're looking for that. You're paying for that. Um, all of that can be addressed. So I'll give you a little example. If you look, this bridge has two standoffs that come into the guitar. They come into little metal buckets that Fender calls thimbles. And, you know, that, that works. It, you can set the height of that bridge. You can intonate it. It's great. But there's a metal on metal there that can rattle. So what you may see is that I have wrapped electrical tape around those stands or standoffs and it doesn't do that anymore. And uh, I have, I'm not using the trim right now. Um, I'm not getting nearly that jangle, but I'm getting a nice bright fender tone and I'll show you that uh, in just a minute. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the circuits and then I'll, I'll demonstrate them. First of all, the fact that this guitar has the full suite of original Fender circuits is great. If you go up to the Player Series, I, I imagine you'll get a very nice guitar, very well built guitar, but they don't have that. You've got to go up to the Ventura Jaguar to get back to uh, the original Jaguar switches. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's the point. You buy this for that. You can get all kinds of tones, and it just gives it a incredibly interesting and funky vibe. And it's just a very little surprise that this became the indie alt, you know, uh, guitar famously uh, in the 90s. It's just a little question way. It's just so different. And it, and it plays so well. And it's so cool. Now, my last comment before we play just a little is I do a lot of features on my channel about guitars for people with smaller hands. I have small hands to start. They are arthritic and they have carpal tunnel. I mean, this is crazy. But I have found a recipe for guitars that work for someone with smaller or hands that have medical issues. This guitar works very well for me. And the magic to that is the scale length, the 24 inch scale length. That covers a multitude of other sins because you know, I can make, I can get my fingers spread enough for this with the 24 inch scale. Also the reach out here, I've had four shoulder surgeries. Reaching out here, it's just accessible compared to other guitars with a longer scale length or an SG for example, where you know, you're reaching out here to the clouds. So this neck is a little bit thicker than a Strat neck. And um, I'm okay with that, just a little bit. Now, I will say as you go up into the Ventura or for sure into the American Original or Johnny Marr, you are getting a thicker yet neck. And I, I probably wouldn't do that with smaller hands. But this neck is, is fine. Now, if I was really motivated, I might try to sand this down a little bit. But I'm not going to do that because it's fine. Now, I've done a couple other mods just before we play, so you know. Even though this famously has the shields on the side of the pickups, I thought that was just a little bit noisy with gain. Just a little bit. Not really objectionable, but I, I can't help it. I like to mess with my guitar. So, I got a new pickguard. Uh, used the copper tape to shield on the pickguard. Uh, I changed from the tortoise shell, and I'll put a picture up with the tortoise shell. Um, it wasn't my style. A lot of people like the tortoise shell, and if you do, that's beautiful. Um, I like the white. A uh, little copper tape. Uh, screwed it back on. It's that easy. There's no special skills involved. And voila, I have a distinctive guitar that is quite quiet. And it works great. So, let's play it just a little uh, and uh, see what you think. Okay. So, I'm starting with a clean tone. Uh, and I think you'll hear right away... <laughs> Just a little bit of that jangle. It's still got that vintage -y. It's very bright. Now, the scale length will always give you a distinctive Fender tone compared to 
uh, a strand or a tele. Uh, because uh, tuning to pitch, you get the strings in a different tension and you just have a different tone. But if you're looking for the bright, looking for that bright, punchy uh, clarity of that fender, you got it. And it sounds great. This is the neck. Uh, of course, you can switch to the bridge or you can put them both on uh, with these funky switches or turn them both off. Uh, and um, the bridge is just, you know, is going to give you that even more punchy. It's not too ice picky, which is great, uh, but it certainly is a cutting uh, vintagey sound. Uh, if I put them both on, you know, it's very nice. Really a nice fender tone. Now, what I find also, and I, I tend to use the neck, uh, is that this has a really great kind of a, a crunchy tone. So I'll show that to you uh, next. I, just, I love that. I could do that absolutely all day. Next, I'll show you what happens if we put on a higher gain. I'm gonna do it, I'll do neck bridge, and I'll show you the rhythm circuit because the rhythm circuit in this guitar is voiced, uh, it uses the neck pickup, but it's voiced with some uh, uh, electrical parts to get uh, kind of darker, and I find it works really well with higher gain. So I'll show you that. Okay, so I'm in the neck, and I'm on a, a higher gain. <laughs> bad at all. If I flip that to the bridge and knock down that uh, tone, okay, but you know what? I never do that. What I do instead is I will flip this rhythm circuit on and check this out. great kind of thrashy, uh, perfectly heavy, but still, still, you know, kind of cutting uh, high gain tone, which is, you put you right back in that, uh, in that indie space or that grunge space, and it's going to cut through the mix. Uh, I don't know if this is ever going to get the girth out of these pickups for metal, but you know, you can make a pretty good run at almost any kind of classic rock or alt rock that you, you want to do. So if I sum this up, I just love this guitar. I really do. I, I like it so much. I like the scale length. I love the look. I love the just craziness of it and the, and the incredible versatility that um, I'm weighing, and I'll appreciate your comments on this, whether I want to do some more upgrades on this, for example, to replace the bridge in the trim with fender parts, or there's some well-known aftermarket part masters, uh, or whether I uh, do a mod shop uh, Jaguar, for example, where I can get the neck I want, uh, more like a strat neck uh, thickness uh, in the 24 inch scale. Love your comments, but I just love this. Again, it it'd be maybe it's a guitar that is better suited for someone that's a little bit adventurous on doing minor mods like I did with this pick guard to mess with, but you don't, you don't need to. And, and look, anybody can take the strings off, take that bridge off, wrap those standoffs in electrical tape and put it back on. You can do this. I have no special skills. So do I recommend this? I really do. And uh, there's a, there's some YouTubers out there that have a lot more detail on the build of these guitars and the mods. There's a, there's a luthier YouTuber named Huishin, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, does a great job. I'll put a link in. Um, but you, know, you don't need to do all that. This is great. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.